Warning. Censorship. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Richmond Hill, Ontario. Well, folks, I'm standing outside the Toronto Muslim Cemetery. I'm with Richmond Hill Ward 2 Councillor Tom Munch. And uh, funny thing is, uh, until just a few minutes ago, there were clearly well over 100 people at this um, cemetery. That breaks the mandate regarding outdoor gatherings. Uh, in fact, I would hazard a guess that there were well over 100 cars here, so easily uh, more than 100 people. To be clear, uh, I'm not about clamping down on people's freedoms, but as we have seen in the months that have gone by in the last year and a half, it seems that every religious institution that gets persecuted by the state regarding COVID rules it's Christians and uh, Christian churches, um, whether it's Pastor Coates, whether it's uh, Pastor Hildebrand, whether it is uh, Pastor Pawlowski. Um, it, it's almost statistically impossible that it is only um, Christian pastors and Christian institutions breaking the rules. But we have right here on camera an example of another faith breaking the rules. And uh, I'm going to get Tom Munch to weigh in on this issue right now. So, you know, it's uh, Thanksgiving today. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And what took place is there was obviously a, a bunch of people who came together. And, um, you know, you say well over 100. Well, I counted well over 300 uh, plus. And uh, just was kind of alerted by that, mentioned to a few people, and that was that. And it seemed to me, I might be incorrect, Tom, but um, as you were snapping some photographs uh, for the evidence, it looked like there was a bit of a mass exodus. Uh, either that or everybody was just leaving at exactly the same time. But I saw car after car after car leave uh, by the time I got here. Um, here's the thing, Tom. I'm not about you know, being a COVID Karen. I'm not about, you know, ratting out anyone to the authorities, but all I'm asking for, and I think all reasonable people would want, is a level playing field. As I said earlier, it just seems that when it comes to faith-based properties, um, it's Christian churches that get literally locked down, whereas the authorities turn a blind eye uh, to this. Why is that? can't really speak as to why people do what they do or where the enforcement or non-enforcement does. In fairness, um, uh, you know, York Region Police, where we're in York Region right now, did did have a police helicopter go over. Um, I did see it. So they, they, I think they did they did take a review of it. And, and as you said, they were here. And by the time they are alerted to it and then they dissipate, you know, who knows? And I think in the Catholic-based schools, perhaps, or Catholic school, uh, churches, uh, maybe what they're happening is when you have set times as to when they're coming, they're an easier... Um, review time as opposed to people that do an ad hoc without having stated times and today you know being Thanksgiving this was an event by for some reason and a lot of people came you know that is fascinating a York Regional Police helicopter I I saw a helicopter too I didn't know it was the police helicopter and let's assume it is so is that their way of enforcement they fly by <laughs> as opposed to having uh, police cars, police SUVs uh, rush to the scene. We've seen that in other instances uh, in York Region. Um, again, I'm, I'm just, not that I want anyone to get a ticket, but if the law is the law, if we're under Canadian law, not Sharia law, why aren't the cops and bylaw here handing out tickets? Um, well, the bylaw wouldn't come from the city, just too many people for them to, to deal with it. And who are you going to give a ticket to? <laughs> so the, the it would be a York Regional Police issue. It's a policing issue uh, stated by the province of Ontario. And the helicopter is, is one of the many vehicles they use for policing. And they got here brisbane quickly because uh, when I alerted, you know, uh, others, including yourself, I alerted the, the police and they, they were here relatively quickly. And the helicopter was a good way to monitor to make sure people are safe. So why they didn't give tickets, I can't tell you. Well, Tom, I'll reach out to the authorities in the aftermath. I just, it's a hypothetical question. We, we will never know the answer to this, but if this were the Toronto Christian Cemetery as, the, as opposed to the Toronto Muslim Cemetery, do you think there'd be different repercussions? What I'm saying is, do you think maybe in the days ahead in the aftermath when the authorities go through the evidence, they'll do what happened to Grace Life Church in Edmonton, i.e. literally wall off the cemetery for a COVID-19 violation? Um, I doubt that they'll do that. But I, what I would say is my hope is that if they see number of people and we have 
a approach where we ask people to be respectful, that they would approach the leadership of the Muslim cemetery to say, hey, look, guys, um, this is something you have to be aware of, and we wish you wouldn't do that because it's not in line with where we need to go. And I would hope they would do the same thing to other faith bases, say, hey, come on, guys, um, you need to walk by the rules. Don't come in with a heavy hand. We're going to try to work collaboratively as a, as a group so we have a law and order and a, and a safe community which we all can respect and, and work together with. Yeah, and, and Tom, once again, I want to reiterate, even if there were more than 300 people here, it's outdoors. I don't see any harm. We have seen um, uh, photographs uh, or, or, or televised sports games of NFL matches where you have like over 70,000 people seating uh, side by side. Um, and we're told that all of these decisions in terms of occupancy and whatnot, it's all driven by the science. Well, fair enough. Um, the science doesn't pick and choose favorites, um, but as we've seen, especially when we catch bureaucrats and our elected elite breaking the rules, sometimes it seems, I think, to average folks at home, it's one rule for thee and one rule for me. Yeah, I, again, I like to have consistency and not, you know, in our world, sometimes it's easier to point fingers and target certain people over others. My hope is that we work on a baseline and everybody works within that baseline and we get through the safety issue, we get through a quality of life, and everybody's treated fairly and responsibly. Clearly, in this example here, um, you know, the, the, the cemetery did not follow those guidelines, and they're the ones that should be looking after, not necessarily the police, but they should be following the guidelines, as should everybody else. We should work, as I said earlier, better together. And one last question, Tom. Uh, are you planning on doing anything uh, in following this up? I know we're not in your actual ward, um, but you are Richmond Hill Councillor. This is Richmond Hill. Will you be going to uh, anyone else to lodge a grievance? Will you be talking to the acting mayor? Uh, where does it go from here as far as you're concerned? Um, I, I will and have alerted some people and uh, tell them what's going on. I don't know what they can do today now that it's Dissipated, yeah. but the awareness has to be there, and, and the next steps forward um, has to be clarified. Which, in my view, is you reach out to the, you know, the management of the of the site and say, "Hey, come on, guys, we gotta make sure you follow protocols." That's it. Well, Tom, thank you again uh, for your time, and we'll see where this goes in the days ahead. You bet. Thanks. Folks, can you imagine vaccine passports are a fact of life in Canada? Do you think that's right? to have medical apartheid? Well, I sure don't. If you can, please go to fightvaccinepassports.com. That's fightvaccinepassports.com. And if you're able to, kindly make a donation.